Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of February 2022. So this month it's going to be all about the coming together of Mars and Venus. They will walk a portion of the night skies together and they will be conjunct. They will be right next to each other for many, many days consecutively. It's quite incredible. This is going to be happening across the month of February, across the month of March, even into the early days of April. So this is pretty amazing energy to be starting the year with. Now, before I get into the astrology for the month, I thought I would just say, well, firstly, it feels like ages since I've done this. And that's because I have been so busy putting together some tutorial videos. So those of you who love the Astro Chat episodes, those of you who enjoy the Masters episodes, I really enjoy making both of those. I especially love making the Masters series, but I've had to take a bit of a break from all of that because I've been spending all my time putting together tutorial videos. And this is because over the course of doing this work, many of you have written in the comments below that you would like me to share with you how I read a chart. You'd like to learn what are, what are my ways, how, how do I do this work? And I thought I would love to share that with you guys. So I have been spending these last few weeks just had my head down. You'll notice I've just been uploading picker cards only. And that's because I have been very busy putting together these tutorial videos. So if you go onto my website, you'll see that there is a page called tutorials. And on there, I have launched two tutorials. The first one I launched, I think I called it how to read a Vedic astrology chart. That is for absolute beginners, guys. So if you are brand new to astrology, if you're, you know, and I, I've kind of made this as if it was for me when I was first beginning. You know, I knew a little bit about my Western signs, but I didn't know Vedic astrology at all. And that's kind of what I've put together. So maybe you might know that you're a Pisces rising and you're a, I don't know, a Virgo moon and a Capricorn sun. You might know your Western coordinates, but you don't know this new Vedic system. And you're wondering, yeah, how, how do I begin? How do I read a chart? What are these funny diamond shaped boxes? What is all of this? And in a very quick way, I get you to read a Vedic astrology chart, a North Indian style Vedic astrology chart. I think it's by page three or four, something like that. Maybe it's page four or five, something like that. You know, I, I basically get you reading your first chart. So if this appeals to you, if you would like to learn how to read this system, it is so easy. I know it probably looks complicated or intimidating or something like that. And I think with Vedic astrology, there are lots of terms, there are lots of things involved, but honestly, it's the easiest chart to read. It really is. I think the North Indian style especially is very, very easy and simple to read. So. I've shared with you how I read charts for beginners and I'll just tell you um, some of the things that the PDF in particular is quite useful. The video is good because I hope that the video gets you motivated, gets you a bit inspired, gets you excited. And then in the PDF, the study guide, that's where you're going to learn how to read planets and signs in houses. You're going to read how, how to read a Lord as well. You're going to discover that. What are these lords of houses? How do I read that? You can learn how to read a waxing or a waning moon in the chart. You'll learn how to read eclipses in a chart. And I've even also shared with you how to draw your very own moon chart. So I think this is a really good beginner guide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share in the links in the description below you'll be able to click on that. You'll also be able to, I'm going to provide a link to a feedback form. And on that feedback form, you will be able to anonymously provide me with feedback. I would love to hear from you. Uh, you know, and you're welcome to pop me an email as well, if you like, if you don't want to be anonymous, but you can also use the form and just be anonymous as well, if you choose. 
and that way you know you'll be able to give me some feedback let me know how you found this tutorial to be so the second tutorial that's on there is my guide to meditation and this is a practice that I have been doing now I think on my insight timer I should share this on my Instagram it says I think I've been doing it for like 40 days straight or something like that it is so good it has helped me so much you know just this afternoon I was starting to get a little bit of a headache and I thought right that's meditation time. I sat down, I did my meditation, all gone, and I'm able to do this video now. So I am getting so many benefits from this practice. This is why I'm doing it every day and I don't think I'm going to stop. So if you would like to see my meditation process, you're very welcome. Now that tutorial, um, the price is really cheap. I just put it three pounds because I want people to be able to pick it up and run with it very easily. And if that's affordable for you, great, um, because that will help me keep doing this work, running this channel, doing the website. And there's lots of things I have to pay to do with the website and all of this. So that's why I'm doing the tutorials. But uh, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer it free of charge by the way the um, how to read a chart thing is on sale until the 1st of March I thought for the first month I would just launch it at a discount price and if you do buy it at the discount price and you have time and ability I'd love to hear your feedback uh, actually by using that feedback form that would really help me out and for the meditation tutorial I'm going to offer that free of charge totally free uh, I love to do that. I'm so happy that, you know, to be able to offer something free. And um, that I'm going to uh, give a discount code. It'll be something, well, no, it will be OM free. O M free, F R E E. If you type that into the shopping area, you will get the meditation. Uh, tutorial absolutely free of charge so and that discount code I'm going to keep that permanent always all right and if you subscribe to the newsletter that's where I'll be sharing that code so don't worry if you forget the code uh, that code will always be available all right so I hope that's good for a brief overview as to what I've been doing so you can see I've been very busy and uh, been working hard even though you haven't heard from me I've been working on all this stuff every single day I've just been working flat out so now we can get into the news how are we doing on time eight minutes not too bad um, news wise I've got a couple of things to talk about one is I wanted to ask a question just to say that I have been hearing about what's been going on in Kazakhstan it sounds very interesting the mainstream media is not covering this news and what I thought I would do is I would ask my audience actually is there anyone who is based in Kazakhstan or do you have family there or do you have friends there and are you able to share some first-hand information perhaps in the comments below I would love to hear from you I would love to hear what is going on there would you be able to let us know because I know in this very big group of us we've got people everywhere all over the world and when I receive bookings from you guys I'm always amazed at the incredible locations and places where you guys come from you know yes I've got people coming to me from India and Australia and UK and America sure those are my main places but I've got people coming in from South America you know the Americas definitely uh, in different parts of Europe it's quite incredible all the different locations where people come from so please do let me know if there's anyone there who would be able to give us some first-hand information these days I always trust comments on YouTube actually it's interesting when I go sometimes yes I'm watching the person speak but very often I'm going in the comments and I'm reading first-hand news and evidence uh, from from people directly and I really like that ability no one's moderating the comments which is great right so you know we can get some truth from there the other thing I wanted to say is that there are peaceful protests going on all around the world they are amping up and I did say that that's going to be a trend that will continue definitely across 2022 and we're going to see humanity I think really flower and flourish in 2023 to 2025 not only that but we're going to have incredible art 
come out during that time. We are going to have so much beautiful art because Saturn is going to be opposite Leo and Leo is creative. Leo is all about art and beauty and music and all these wonderful things. And recently I was watching Max Egan. That's how I came to find out about Kazakhstan, by the way, in case anyone's wondering, how did I find out? Because I don't watch mainstream news. I haven't watched anything like that for a long time. But I do watch Max Egan. I think he's on Rumble or Brand New Tube. You can find him in those places. And when I was watching him, he featured a beautiful protest song by a lady called Joy De May. And the song is Hands Off Our Children. And what I thought I would do is I would just share with you maybe a minute or so of that music now. And then what I'll do is I'll play a chunk of that music at the very end of this video. So I'll provide a link. You can skip ahead and you can watch the end of this video. You can watch these beautiful women sing us to the, to the end of the video. But I wanted to share this because I thought it was really moving really beautiful and this is a taste of the energy that's coming out in the world right now it's going to be coming out more and more across 2022 but just you watch 23 to 25 yeah there's going to be some challenges there's going to be some tough stuff still but it's going to inspire a lot of new growth music art beauty you know leo is going to be touched uh, quite soon so we're going to see some good art so Here's a little brief clip of Joy De May. Wasn't that beautiful? I love that song and I'll, I'll put some more at the end and a jump ahead link so that you can just jump straight to that. But in terms of news, the other thing I wanted to cover was Novak Djokovic. He has been here to Australia and unfortunately he has had to leave as well. It's been crazy what's been going on there. So I thought I'd take a look astrologically and I'd see, all right, what, what's happening here for Novak? I, I think he is serving a bigger purpose through this okay he's not able to play the tournament it would seem at this point in time we've got this mercury uranus this kind of the rules are changing day by day sort of thing so i think he got caught up in that so we now know that yeah he's not playing in the tournament but what he has done i think is brought a huge amount of awareness to the fact that choice is very important that we should all have choice doesn't matter who you are but choice is, is a really really important thing and he's done a massive service far bigger than playing tennis you know so i think what he's done is incredible just by standing up and i read i think some headline today on the internet something about the fact that he has all these sponsorships that are on the line and what I was really happy to read is that there is one sponsor who is keeping him and they're saying, well, no, we agree with Novak and we believe that this is a personal matter. You know, whether you want to take this or not, it's up to you. And they are standing by him. And I think that's so wonderful. So I also read that he might be taking, I don't know if he would take the Tennis Federation to court or possibly even Australia to court. That would be very interesting. So, 
Let's take a look at my notes here and see what I've got. Yes, he was caught up in that Mercury square Uranus. Last month I mentioned it, that Mercury will be square Uranus across the month of January. And what that will mean is that, you know, Mercury, the rules, following rules, logic, order, all this kind of thing. Uranus is this changeable energy. And I said that day by day, rules will flip flop. Rules will, oh, we're doing this one day, we're doing that the next day. We don't know what we're doing you know, the day after. And it, he has been caught up in this, that's for sure. I think he was also very much affected by Venus and Mercury being in retrograde as well. And I'm pretty sure all of that activity was in his 10th house from the moon when I was having a look at that earlier today. I think the energies should improve for him 30th January onwards when Venus moves forward. And Feb fifth is when Mercury moves forward as well. Again, this should be helpful for Djokovic as well. I imagine he's still dealing with all of this stuff. I also had a look at the question of if he was to sue one of these institutions, Tennis Australia, Australian government, any of that. I've got the note here, the winning stars he uses for tennis could be used to achieve successful outcomes in court. He has not been able to use his uh, winning stars. Now, what are his winning stars? If we take a look at his birth chart, you will see, and I was contemplating this as I was looking at his chart earlier today, he's got an incredible sun there in the sixth house. That's a winning star straight away. Mercury in the sixth is brilliant as well. And Venus is quite powerful there, which is also working with Mars. It's kind of that entire little segment of his birth chart is definitely helping him beat the competition constantly. So that is quite interesting. And to me, I see those as his winning stars. Now, what's making him such an incredible tennis player? Well, I would say that's in his D10. If we take a look at his D10 chart, you'll see that he's got exalted Mercury in the third house. And what's that all about? Well, that is perfection. Uh, one of the things that he is known for, I was reading about him today in Wikipedia, and I'll try and find the grab and I'll put it on the screen, but he is famous for being something like the most perfect of players, that he you know, really gets the ball exactly where he wants it to go. There's a perfection about him. So that's, what is that? That's hands, okay? He's using his hands every day, and he's got exalted mercury, talk about precision in the third house of hands. You know, it's quite incredible. His Brigabindu point is there as well in Hasta Nakshatra, which is all about hands. So this is a man who, you know, we can see in his, his charts that he's absolutely doing what he's meant to be doing. And, but I think the winning stars, the stars that keep making him win and beat the competition, that's definitely you know, his, um, his sixth house there. He's also got a sun there in the sixth house of his D9 chart. Again, that's, you know, just a very strong winning star, a star that will keep winning against the competition. Sun in the 10th will also do that as well. But um, yeah, I, I was looking at what would happen if he does a case. I think that if he does lodge a case, it would be really good for him to act this year. And that would be amazing because there should be a very good outcome for him, I would hope, because he's got Saturn 11th from his moon. This Saturn is also third from natal Saturn until 2023. So if he was to use this energy in that way, that would be incredible. And that could be beneficial for a lot of people who are struggling, a lot of people who've lost their jobs because you know, and there are cases being lodged everywhere. I saw in England recently, a friend of mine uh, in Bali sent me some brilliant footage of a criminal case that's being lodged in England. And I think England is doing an amazing job. I think they're really leading the way when it comes to freedom, human rights, protest, all this kind of thing. So let's take a look at the big news. Mars and Venus are going to be walking together in the night sky. And last month when I talked about this, I think I said, well, I thought it would be quite romantic and nice, but I've been contemplating this quite a bit. And I'm actually beginning to think it could be good, 
it could also not be so good as well. Let's get into it. Let's see. So I'm saying here that they walk together in the night sky. This is all month in Feb. This is all month March and a little portion of early April. And now from Feb 13 to March 13, that's a long stretch where they are just about exactly conjunct. I kept clicking up on my system and I kept observing that they're constantly, they're within a degree of each other for that entire time. And now when they're in a degree with each other, what is that? That's actually planetary war. Okay, so we've got Mars and Venus at war actually possibly for this this long stretch and I've been looking at this in terms of each one of us personally as individuals I'm not reading this one for the collective uh, I have really kept my mind on what this means for us as as people as individuals and how that manifests in our day-to-day -day lives and I think in our day-to-day -day lives this could manifest quite easily as yes it could be passion so if you're in a great relationship with someone this could be a very passionate time but if you're not in a good way with your partner right now maybe there's arguments or something like that I would just say be careful this is really a time where arguments could uh, you know flare up basically I, d I do see that this could be a time of arguments and that could definitely be with your significant other okay we've got Mars and Venus yeah kind of at war here so um, and I think Mars energy is going to be really strong across I'm pretty sure it's March because let me just bring up a chart here and look this up let's have a look here March is when they move into yeah it's kind of early March they're gonna move into Capricorn and in Capricorn Mars is exalted so the masculine energy is going to be strong and the masculine energy I mean talk about wanting to win an argument who wants to win an argument more than Mars I don't know well there are a couple of contenders but Mars is very strong for wanting to win arguments so I think the masculine energy is going to be really strong across the month of March but in the lead up to that time I actually do I, I see Venus as being a little bit stronger actually and I will be covering this for each sign so don't you worry we're going to have a look at that for each sign but I've got here yeah if you are coupled up or single if relationships are important to you then this is going to be a very important time okay so love I do think is going to be highlighted and this this could be collective as well this there, there could be some quite big flare-ups on the political scene arguments this kind of thing absolutely that could happen so if we take a look at which signs are these two walking through they're walking through Sagittarius and Capricorn so in Sagittarius we've got well we've got Venus here the counselor okay and what's she going to want to do well she, if she's going to be closely paired there with Mars some of that can do Mars energy is going to rub off on her and how would she use that well I think she would be tempted to fix her partner to heal her partner you know to get them to change and what I'm going to say to you is that that could be counterproductive okay and it's a really good quote by Julia Roberts and I'll put that on the screen it's interesting that this has come up I wasn't sure if I was going to use these quotes or not but I might as well I, I do like this quote by Julia Roberts it's very empowering for women she says women you are not rehabilitation centers for badly raised men it's not your job to fix him change him parent him or raise him you want a partner not a project now that is some tough love right there okay that's a very you know Saturnian straight down the line thing to say uh, it's not really the greatest thing perhaps that a man would like to hear I also did look for a quote I wanted to be a bit even in my reporting here so I do have a good quote for men um, but the, again this is more from a female point of view as well dear men it said you might think she wants your car your money and gifts but the right woman wants your time your smile your honesty your effort 
and you choosing to put her as a priority. So yeah, but I mean, I think men are going to have amazing energy in um, in the month of March, where they're going to be strong. The, the masculine principle is going to be exalted. It's going to want to win the argument. It might want to have arguments too. But what I'm saying is I think, and that could be useful at work, that could be useful in other domains and other areas. You might need that energy. But I think that over the next couple of months, this is really going to be a time where each of us should focus on the self, focus on our own hearts, focus on I'm going to change me and I'm going to lift me up and if I change me maybe that other person will raise two. If they don't it's okay because I'm going to keep going. And I tell you something, Venus is going to just fly forward uh, in, I think we're looking at sort of April, end of April onwards. She's flying by herself and she's having a great time. And she's flying into all the beautiful energies. She's flying into Aquarius and Pisces and all the personal, lovely, you know, Aries right through there to Leo. She's got a beautiful stretch ahead of her and she's not going to be tied in with Mars there. So you can interpret that how you want to. Uh, but yeah, I, I think this is going to be a good time these next couple of months where I feel like some things might be being brought into your experience to look at and deal with. And if you can, you deal with it on your own. So we're talking no blame, no fixing, no changing the other person, no... And let's use Jerry Wise's, uh, Jerry Wise is a brilliant, I'll give you his, his link and details. Jerry Wise is a brilliant counsellor. He says, stay on your side of the tennis net. And we've just been talking about Novak Djokovic. And yes, definitely stay on your side of the tennis net. Sort yourself out. Don't worry about the other person. That's going to really help over these next couple of months. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide some links to relationship experts that I've been watching over the last few weeks because I've been looking at this phenomenon uh, on my astrological system for a while. So I have had some time to prepare and I have been myself looking at all these different relationship type videos just to, well, to learn and keep relearning the content. This is stuff that I love and I work with you guys through this stuff as well. So I always need to be researching and learning and relearning and immersing myself in this content. So I thought I would share with you some of the really good videos that I've watched lately. One was about limerence, which I thought was fantastic. And this is by the crappy childhood fairy. I think she is absolutely brilliant. I've watched dozens of her videos. I don't know, countless videos by her. They're so good. They're nice and short, easy to take in. And this thing about limerence is really important at this time because a lot of people are dealing with relationships where, you know, because people are in lockdown, people are not meeting up physically, people are not seeing each other. So they are doing things online and people are creating fake accounts and spying and all this kind of thing, right? So that's a good video about that. Definitely take a look at that video. Um, she, she gets into this stuff in some detail. And the other relationship expert that I want to draw your attention to, I'm just checking the time. Oh, we're at the 28 minute mark. Oh, I see. I've got this on a sort of long play format. Right. Okay. Normally this cancels at 24 minutes. Okay. That's fine. This will cut out in a bit though. Um, I'll make the whole video through this long play. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> RC Blakes Jr. Check out this guy. I have watched a dozen or more of his videos and they're long. They're like an hour each, but I have consumed so much RC Blakes over the last couple of weeks. I think he's incredible and he is very much empowering towards women, but guys, you should watch him as well because he does stuff about how to be a king, how to be a great guy, how to, you know, attract the right lady. He's got content just for men as well. And he teaches men how to be a king and he teaches women how to be a queen. And I like this kind of thing. He empowers each gender in, in exactly the right way. 
and I really really like his stuff so definitely go and check him out and I think I'll include a couple of other links one is to Sam Vaknin he's a really good professor of psychiatry um, psychiatry psychology I think psychology whom I've been watching over the years he's absolutely brilliant and I noticed that he is softening and becoming more spiritual over time which is so wonderful to see and yeah if there are any other links uh, let's have a look here take back your life own it I think these are all the ones that I'll, I'll include so far and I'll include a link to Jerry Wise as well sorry the camera got cut but I was saying I'll include a link to Jerry Wise as well who teaches that whole thing about being on your side of the tennis net it's absolutely brilliant content so why don't we take a look at the mini reports for each sign we're going to start with Aries welcome thank you so much for joining now what do we have this month we've got a really big Mars Venus conjunction across the month of Feb it's even going to be across the month of March this is really big energy because at times these two are going to be at war with each other okay so Venus energy though for you all month in the month of Feb is going to be really good and that is because you've got these two in the ninth house Venus is great in the ninth house Mars is not so great in the ninth house okay Mars might be you know trying for things trying too hard but coming up against authority and Mars is not able to break through Mars doesn't do so well here but Venus does great here and what I would say to you this month is that let your feminine side lead okay so whether you're a man or a woman it doesn't matter but this is a time to be receptive this is a time to listen this is a time to take on board other people's opinions that's going to really matter it's also a great time for you to learn from new gurus okay so some of the links that I'm sharing below people like the crappy childhood fairy or RC Blakes or Sam Vaknin these are really great teachers that you can learn so much from and this would be a really good time for you to explore your beliefs about love what do you really believe about love and you can do that just just through watching the videos of these gurus things will occur to you about your own life you'll start to reflect on your own life and you'll get aha moments so this is definitely a great time for you to learn about things like you know codependence things like the narcissist empath dynamic uh, or C C PTSD I always mix up those letters C PTSD yeah post-traumatic stress disorder yeah um, definitely a good time to learn about these things now work wise with Mars in your ninth house don't push it be careful of conflicts with authority bosses or your dad okay so yeah it's not a time to be pushing anything or trying too hard with the masculine energy now this month is your last month of Rahu Ketu axis being in Taurus and Scorpio so for you this is happening second and eighth houses okay so for you this will really be the last month where you will have a very good opportunity to speak up about family matters is there something to do with your family members or family matters is there something there that you need to wrap up or deal with or you could do with sorting that out before the energy of Rahu leaves Taurus okay Rahu's going to leave Taurus so you've got a whole month here to finalize anything to do with family matters finalize anything to do with wealth money savings that sort of thing okay it's great time if you if you need to speak up on something this is the month to do it okay because the energy is going to change now the other thing that you can do you're going to have Ketu in the eighth house so you're going to have about a month to resolve issues to do with shared assets okay anything to do yeah with family shared assets inheritance if there's something you need to wrap up if there's something you need to do or to organize this is the month to do it because next month in March 
the focus is going to shift and for 1.5 years you're going to have brand new energies okay and when that time comes i will talk you through what those are so i'll be focusing on that next month i mean i might i don't know if i'll make the Rahu Ketu video this month or next month but I'll, I'll sort you out so definitely come back to the channel for that now there's a new moon first feb capricorn shravana nakshatra 10th house for you guys so this is going to be a really good time actually to philosophize about your career what it is that you want to do and to plant some seeds this is a great time to think strategically think big think long term think what would i rather be doing or what is this stepping stone that i'm on what potentially is it leading to and new moon is a great time to plant seeds so put your wishes and intentions down for what it is that you would like to create that's a new moon on the first of feb now there's a full moon happening on the 17th of feb and that's going to be leo maga nakshatra in your fifth house so this is a great time to aim for completion on a creative project so is there something that you're working on now perhaps and i yeah i'm kind of looking at this going yeah 17th of feb what can i complete there um i don't have this but you do <laughs> and you you could be completing on a creative project so is this something that you want to have finished by the 17th of feb make sure you get it finished or that would be a really good date to finish the project on okay uh, and it's also a really good time on the 17th of feb to survey your kingdom okay what have you created in life to date are you enjoying it you know and again you can be contemplating on that full moon on the 17th of feb again you can be looking strategically and seeing okay what is it that i would like to do going forward how would i want to change and it can be a time even this is leo maga nakshatra the nakshatra of kings you might want to check out some other people and see how have they structured their career what is it that they've done how did they get to where they have gone to you might like to be thinking about some of these things on the 17th of feb so aries thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome taurus taurus welcome thank you so much for joining now this is a big month we have got mars and venus coming together and they're going to be conjoined across the month of feb and they're also going to be conjoined across the month of march this is huge and at many points across this time they are going to be at war with each other okay so this is planetary war this is yudbala this is all going on so the youth is going to be happening in your eighth house and this is great venus energy is strong here in the eighth house so across the month of feb your feminine side is going to be strong okay so it's a great time for your feminine side to lead it's also a really good time to listen to the women in your family what do the women in your family have to say what do they think what are their ideas what are their strategies about the future definitely be listening to the women in your family that's going to be important i've got a note here great time for the women of the family to speak up to strategize especially about things like shared assets this could even be a really good time just to do simple practical things like clutter clearing and getting rid of things and are there you know in a house where there are shared public areas you know you might want to re-strategize something uh, clutter clear get rid of stuff change i don't know how the living room is done or whatever but like it's that kind of thing now this is the last month of rahu ketu axis being in taurus and scorpio and for you this is happening across your first and seventh axis so this is really interesting for you this is going to be the last time to enjoy perhaps you've been now you can reflect on this if you look back over the last year and a half have you yourself been more in focus somehow and that could be for yourself especially if say for example you're single perhaps you've found that this has been a time where over the last year and a half it's actually been really hard to meet someone 
because you've also had Ketu in your seventh house. So perhaps this has been a very self-focused time. So it might be self-focused because of that, because you've been single. It might have been self-focused because, well, let's say, for example, you do social media. Maybe you've had more prominence or, or people have been looking at your stuff more. Or you've had more subscribers or something like that. So over the last year and a half, things have been quite focused on yourself in some way. This is going to be your last month to really enjoy that, okay? Because the energy is going to shift in March. So definitely enjoy this time of extra attention on yourself or extra focus on yourself. I'm sure in some aspect you'll be able to see that you've been quite self-focused, which has been necessary, okay? Because Rahu in your first house would have wanted that. So that's a good thing. But the other good thing that's happening is that this is going to be the last month of the suppression energy of Ketu blocking your seventh house. So if you've been single, for example, perhaps you haven't been able to meet someone or something like that. Well, this is the last month of that suppression energy blocking your seventh house. Okay, so that's a good thing, right? It's great news for singles. Um, you might have also felt that your love life has been a bit dry or been a bit stale or things have been a bit boring or you feel like, well, I'm not going anywhere, I'm making no progress, no movement. When are we going to get married? You know, we've been together for several years, but we haven't married. You know, you're going to have a, the last month of this suppression energy and then things are going to shift. So next month, the focus will change for about a year and a half. So this is, this is a big time that we're navigating at the moment. We've got a new moon on the 1st of Feb. This is going to happen in Capricorn, Shravana Nakshatra. And for you, this will be in your ninth house. So you can plant seeds around the kind of skill set you want to develop for yourself, especially when it comes to your career. What is it that you'd love to learn? What is it that you know that if I do this or if I get that qualification, it's going to take my career to the next level? I would love to do that. Well, this is a time to plant a seed for that to happen. Okay. Uh, and then we have a full moon on the 17th of Feb. That's Leo Maga Nakshatra in your fourth house. So this is a really great time to complete on a home related project. Is there something that you're organizing at home? Maybe you're renovating something. Maybe you're fixing something up. Can you get it done by the 17th of Feb? That would be perfect. And this is also a good time. Now, I said this for Leo as well to survey your kingdom, but I'm saying this for you as well, Taurus, to survey your kingdom because this is Leo Maga Nakshatra in your fourth house. So, yeah, you will actually, let me just check that. I want to double check that for you, Taurus. Where are you? look here yes that certainly is that is your fourth house there so this is the kingdom as well this is where the queen uh you know is at her full strength so you're surveying your kingdom here as well or your queendom however you want to see that but this is a really good time to just survey your life yes your home your career your kingdom the functioning kingdom that is your life you know your money how everything works, what you are in charge of. It's just a good time, take stock, see, you know, be on top of everything. It's a good time to get on top of everything. All right, well, Taurus, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just taking the time. We're all good. Okay, this month we've got a big conjunction happening in the sky. It's Mars and Venus. They're coming together. They're going to walk the night sky together. It's really exciting. Now for you, okay, this is happening in your seventh house. I will tell you something, Gemini. This is not the best energy for love, but don't worry. You're going to have better energy uh, coming as soon as I believe it's um, March. March things will improve. But for this month, I've got the note here. You're going to be most benefited by working on yourself by working on your side of the tennis net when it comes to your relationship, okay? You're not going to experience much joy by, you know, if you're having issues with your partner, this could be a difficult time, okay? 
Um, if you're in love and you're having a honeymoon period and well, I tell you, things can be very passionate, so that's great. We love that, but for some people, and I think for a lot of people, things are tense out there. And I will say that the, the potential for arguments is, is kind of high. So I've got the note here, love your partner, but don't try to resolve things directly with them. Make progress by cultivating love, by giving out love, and by removing the blocks you have to love within yourself. Okay, that's going to be the best thing to do across this month. Now, the other thing we have happening this month is that this is your last month of having Rahu Ketu Axis in Taurus and Scorpio, which for you is your 12th and 6th houses. So this is going to be the last time if you've been enjoying a lot of spiritual isolation. Now, for some of you, this will be sad to let that go. But for some of you, you're going to be welcoming uh, things because I do believe that for you and let me just I want to have a look at this Gemini I'm going to open up your chart here and I want to see because I'm pretty sure that you've got yeah you've got some uh, it's, it's going to be things that are going to be more social for you okay and we'll talk about that when I talk about Rahu Ketu Axis shift I might do that in a separate video it might be in the March Outlook we'll see but what I can tell you is that this is going to be your last month to enjoy spiritual isolation. Some of you may miss that when it goes. It's sort of, we're looking at March onwards for 1.5 years. Things are going to be a lot more social for you. And I think some of you will be like, oh, thank God. You know, some of you will be like, yes, well, you're Gemini. Of course, you would love to have interactions. So, yeah, I, I would imagine that some of you might miss the isolation. But equally, some of you might um, very much not miss it at all. So what I'm saying here is that you've got a month left of being isolated. Okay. And the other thing is that, well, one, th this one you will be sad to see go. I think you've got a really nice Ketu energy there in, uh, in your sixth house there. So that has been suppressing competition. It's also been suppressing illness. It should have been doing that anyway. So that suppression energy is going to lift. Ketu in the sixth or Ketu in Virgo is brilliant, actually. It's, it's one of the best star placements because, you know, it, it kind of suppresses all the bad stuff. So you've been having it good in that sense, and that's been over the last year and a half. But you're going to experience a shift in March. You're going to experience a shift uh, to, some, to some newer energies and we're going to talk about what that is when we get to March. But let's take a look at the moon situation. What do we have happening this month? So we've got a new moon, 1st of Feb, Capricorn, Shravana Nakshatra happening in your 8th house. So this is a great time to plant seeds around shared assets or any wishes that you have regarding your family. What would you like to have happen with your family? You know, this is a great time to wish for for that. You know, maybe you want to extend your family, expand your family. You want to find your tribe. Maybe you want to all come together. What is it that you want to wish for? And then we've got a full moon happening on the 17th of Feb, and that's Leo Maga Nakshatra third house. So this is a great time to complete big projects that require your effort. Okay, if there's some big project that you have to do that requires a lot of effort, a lot of your energy, this will be a good time to complete on that. So if you can get things to complete there for the 17th of Feb, that'd be great. There's a lot of courage, energy present. The, the full moon, it's the moon, she's lit, she's bright. And she's going to be there in Leo in your third house. So if there's an important conversation that you want to have, and if this conversation has a tone of wrapping something up or finalizing something or bringing something to a completion, closure, any of that. This is a really good time to have that big conversation. You will have the words to speak. You'll know exactly what to say and the, the courage and the confidence will be there to really express your full self. So Gemini, I'm wishing you all the best for this month. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're good. So when it comes to this Mars and Venus conjunction, 
For you, we have Venus and Mars in the sixth house. Okay, good. I'm glad to report some good news here because Mars is brilliant in the sixth house. Mars loves to be here because he loves to win and he can win. He can be very powerful here. I would say though, when it comes to love, put love on the back burner for now. This is not a great month for love. And in fact, for you, it's cancer, you're gonna to have to wait a while because the month after is not gonna be great either. And yeah, this is quite interesting. Your masculine energies are actually gonna be quite strong across these next two months. So harness that masculine energy and put it into your work. And if you feel like you wanna win or you wanna knock off the competition or do better or excel or <coughs> any of that use your masculine energy to do that this this is a good time to uh to excel at work good for legal cases good for winning good for competing good for making progress you know you could earn a lot of money potentially as well even but when it comes to love I would say put it on the back burner and do your inner work. Do the Jerry Wise, I'm gonna work on this side of the tennis net type stuff. Just you, you keep to your own energy and don't get any involved in any arguments with your lover or your partner. That, that would not be a good thing to do uh, these next two months. So we've got a big shift happening. We're gonna have Rahu Ketu Axis shift into Taurus and Scorpio. That's gonna happen in March. So you've got one month left of you know, what has been in place for about 1.5 years. And so for you, what is this? Well, you've got one month left to really enjoy social energy. Uh, you've had some, yeah, you've got Rahu there in, <clears throat> in your 11th house. So that is great social energy. That's great, you know, Perhaps you've been able to be quite social, hopefully. I don't know, with the lockdowns, it's kind of difficult to know, isn't it? Um, I mean, and that that is, when we're talking about lockdowns, we're talking about Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. Okay, so that's kind of just heavy energy across the board. That's just a blanket of, you know, heaviness everywhere. But if you have been able to be social uh, over the last year and a half, well, what I'm gonna say is that that is gonna shift. Uh, you've got one month left of it. You're gonna become quite work focused. Okay, so the next 1.5 years after March, you're gonna be a lot more work focused. So this is your last month really to enjoy some lighthearted, nice opportunities with friends, socializing, all that kind of thing. A good bit of news we have here though for you, Cancer, and that is that the suppression energy that's been on your fifth house of romance, that is gonna lift. And that's been on there for a year and a half. So if you feel, if you're single and perhaps you feel like, yeah, well, I have not met anyone or nothing's going on or my relationship scene is dead, well, this, this could be why. You've had Ketu in, um, in your fifth house. So you've got one month of that left. So the suppression on the romance side of your life is going to leave so that's a good thing okay um, this is great for singles out there so next month I will be talking about what this shift means for you and uh, I'll explain where your Rahu Ketu axis will be and what it's going to mean for you all right let's take a look at the moon situation so we've got a new moon on the 1st of Feb that's Capricorn Shravana Nakshatra 7th house so you can plant a seed around marriage if if you want if you're single you want to get married or you want a partner there's a great time for you to plant that seed okay and that's really good because you've got Ketu leaving um, so this is nice this is so there is even though I'm saying this is not a great time for love in many ways it is a, an excellent time in love for you because you're doing all the behind the scenes work okay you're, you're cleaning up your heart you're getting it ready and you're getting it ready for love okay so plant seeds around meeting someone if that's what you want to do or around having more love in your life and particularly your partnerships because that new moon on the 1st of Feb is happening in your seventh house okay so 
that's great that's really nice energy and then you've got the full moon on the 17th of Feb so this is Leo Maga Nakshatra second house okay so something regarding your family might culminate or come to completion and this is a really good time if you want to have a conversation with a family member and you want to express the fullness of yourself this is a really good time to do that this is a good time to perhaps wrap something up or express or explain you know what what that thing meant for you or, or whatever it is it's, it's a full moon good time to have to have a good honest conversation with someone all right cancer well thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome leo leo welcome thank you so much for joining i hope you don't mind leo <clears throat> i am going to just have a little sip of water here because i've been talking non-stop and i'll just check the time we're okay good all right what do we have going on leo we have got a big conjunction happening in the sky we've got mars and venus coming together we're going to be walking the night sky and for you this is all happening in your fifth house and venus does really well here so mars might be a little bit frustrated mars might be you know kind of trying to get ahead or trying to take the lead on something but finding that he's coming up against ceilings he, you know Mars, Mars doesn't do so well here so Mars is very creative here though I will say that Mars, Mars has good energy here but Venus is taking the lead in your fifth house here so when it comes to love and romance do your, do your inner work on your own if you can and listen to your feminine side and basically throughout this whole month let your feminine side lead so if you're a man or a woman it doesn't matter just let your feminine side lead which means things like listen more and take your time and go slow you know there's no rush okay take your time don't be in a rush Mars is always in a rush Venus is not in a rush Venus likes to take time so make sure you take some time uh, I've got the note here in a relationship really listen to your lady if you're a man and if you're the lady in the relationship well take some time out for yourself don't you know be rushed by anyone okay you take take your pace go at your time and watch some RC Blakes if you're in a if you're a lady in a relationship he's brilliant at coaching women and empowering women to find their inner queen and here we are with Leo we're in the kingdom right now so you need to find that queen side of you I've got the note here try not to fix the other but see what you can do with your energy on your side of the tennis net to let go of what's not working okay what dynamic or pattern is not working see if you can work with you see if you can work with it on your side I know it, it does seem like it's the other person I know I know I, I meditation I will tell you something I've been meditating a lot and one of the things it does is it helps you it helps give you space and time you have time to kind of see what's going on and you have time to choose to respond or to choose not to or to choose even to elevate the whole thing and turn it into something humorous or light meditation is amazing because it gives you this space where you can you can transform things it it buys you time it buys you space it's it's really incredible so if you are struggling in a relationship I would say definitely meditate um, it's it's a really good time for that now this month is the last month of the Rahu Ketu axis in Taurus and Scorpio so this for you is energy that's running on your 10th and 4th axis so this is going to be the last time that you ex that you have to really accelerate your work I would imagine yes you have been very work focused Leo I know because of all your other placements as well yeah you've been very very work focused so that's going to shift kind of March uh, around March and I will be talking you through what that shift is going to indicate for you but one really good thing that's going to happen is that this is the last month of 
the suppression energy that's been on your fourth house of home okay this is going to lift so if you feel like you've been stuck at home a lot you might feel like yeah i've been really stuck at home i haven't traveled i haven't gone anywhere i've been at home yes that's due to lockdowns and the world situation but it could also be to do a little bit with this k in your fourth house area when that shifts i do believe that you should be able to travel more you might even move home so maybe you haven't moved home but you've been wanting to move home so or you've been stuck or there's something been stuck about your situation that energy is going to lift you've got one month more of it left you've had it for about a year and a half so we're going to talk about uh, you know where the focus is going to change I'm going to cover that on the channel let's take a look at the moon situation we've got new moon first of Feb Capricorn Shravana Nakshatra sixth house so you can plant sorry Leo the camera got cut just now you can plant seeds around your career around the next steps that you wish to take in your career this is a really great time to visualize what it is that you'd like to do perhaps where you are right now is a stepping stone and perhaps you know I'm sure in some ways it is adding to that bigger thing that you want to do because I always believe that no work is wasted nothing goes to waste I've been in so many weird jobs and odd jobs where I've just been like how is this going to help me like is this helping me you know is this a total waste of time but I've always been amazed at how that exact experience has been so useful and so necessary so don't discount where you are but equally see if you can take this thread to, to where it is that you really want to go so that's new moon first Feb you can plant some seeds around your career now we've got a full moon 17th Feb this is Leo Magha Nakshatra your first house this is all about you oh this is amazing so something big will culminate <clears throat> or come to completion regarding yourself regarding you as a whole regarding you know how you've been this could even be a time where you say goodbye to an old way of being that just doesn't work for you anymore you know and maybe there is some way of being and I'll give you an example people pleasing how many people are starting to give that up I know I I should I definitely was alerted to that when I got into the work of Anita Morjani definitely check out Anita Morjani I'll put her name on the screen she is the ultimate when it comes to people pleasing she did it for so many years and boy did she give it up um, she's a terrific guru teacher to learn from about that in addition to so many other things she is profound so definitely if you haven't met Anita Morjani get into her work she's absolutely incredible but this this could be a time where you completely say goodbye to an old way of being that just doesn't work anymore and you want to step into that new empowered ready version of yourself you're ready now you know it's something you're going to say goodbye to I can just feel it all right Leo thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome Virgo Virgo welcome thank you so much for joining now we've got a big conjunction happening in the sky we've got Mars and Venus they're going to walk that night sky together they're going to be conjunct they are going to be at times bickering and arguing with each other there's going to be a war going on up there so this is happening for you in your fourth house now Venus does beautifully in the fourth house so when it comes to love and romance yes there might be some arguments frustrations but let your feminine side lead okay if you're a man in the relationship listen to your lady and and, and just try to let her take the lead kind of thing uh, for this month that would be that would be quite useful and helpful and if you're a lady in the relationship see if you can get yourself some space see if you can go slow see if you can take your time don't be rushed by male masculine energy you take your time you go slowly okay I've got the note here cook something nurturing cook, cook beautiful food you're at home here you're in the fourth house of home so be at home and enjoy that Venus is great in the fourth house but Mars might be restless okay Mars can get cabin fever here in the fourth house so 
if you're restless channel that into exercise that's what I'm going to say there or maybe a home renovation project maybe be careful with that just exercise I think exercise is a good thing do that um, also be careful how you speak to your mother as well I've got Mars in the fourth that's another thing there all right so now this is the last month of Rahu Ketu axis being in Taurus and Scorpio okay we're gonna have a big shift in March now you've had this energy in your ninth house and third house for the last year and a half so for you this is going to be the last month to really enjoy now this is not going to be for everyone but I've got the note here enjoy the umbrella of your mentors or an authority that you admire Rahu in the ninth sometimes um, that can be you know you you want a guru or you want an authority figure you want something that looks after you okay and this is going to be your last month of enjoying that if there's been protection due to that or if it's felt like an umbrella or if there's something that's been kind of an authority that's been looking after you this is kind of the last month of that it's going to shift um, this could also be the last month of you perhaps you've been using this Rahu energy in the ninth house maybe you've been using that to pick up your own authority uh, this will be the last month of you really needing to do that as well now the suppression energy Ketu energy on your third house that's going to lift so you're going to be able to travel more I would say yeah I do think so I think travel should open up for you actually um, because you've had K2 in your third so short distance type of travel or short travels that should open up for you more the ability to do that you're also going to have more access to courage your own courage as well I do think if you feel that that has been suppressed sometimes K2 doesn't necessarily suppress everything in a house but it, it is a suppression energy it can suppress things so see what lifts and shifts for you but next month we're going to have Rahu Ketu axis shift I will be covering that here on the channel and that's going to last for about a year and a half so come back for that and I'll talk more about that then we've got new moon happening on the 1st of Feb so that's Capricorn Shravana Nakshatra that's happening for you in your fifth house oh this is beautiful you can plant seeds regarding your love life romance children creative projects the other thing that you've got here which is really really powerful is you've got you've got this new moon in a very creative place so keep a little journal maybe you want to keep a dream diary around the first of Feb um, listen for downloads ideas inspirations something will occur to you you might be able to draw something uh, some very creative powerful ideas might come to you and there's a full moon happening on the 17th of Feb that's Leo Maga Nakshatra 12th house so you actually might find it difficult to sleep at this time um, this is a really good time this is a really good full moon though on the 17th of Feb to contemplate your spiritual growth and to really look back and see and celebrate and see how far you've come you know what is it that you know now that you totally didn't know five years ago what is it that you know now that you didn't know 10 years ago okay and the other thing that this will do is it will soften your heart as well it will bring you a lot of compassion and we all need a lot of compassion because everybody is at different stages of spiritual development right now and it's very easy for us to be angry or annoyed or frustrated with other people but we've got to recognize that they are just at a different point of awakening and you know okay you might be more advanced or you might know more but look back and see that well 10 years ago you didn't know what you know now 20 years ago you didn't know what you know now so there'll be a lot of um, heart softening that can come actually with this beautiful full moon on the 17th of Feb where you recognize that you know okay perhaps you're further ahead spiritually but you know you're more awake all that kind of thing but at one point you weren't right and that will help you be 
this soft and easy space for the unawakened to come and awaken in your space too. So Virgo, this is a beautiful energy all round. I know there's some tough stuff, uh, tough stuff happening here with Mars and Venus, but I feel like you're gonna you're gonna be fine with that. You've got a, really, a lot of really nice things here. So Virgo, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So the big news we have this month is we've got Mars and Venus conjunct in the sky. I'm just checking the time. We're good. Um, they're conjunct in the sky. For you, oh my gosh, you have got a great thing here, Libra. This is sensational. You've got Venus and Mars in your third house. Both of these are fantastic. You are lucky, lucky, lucky. Let me tell you, this is an amazing time for you, okay? So this can be a lot of passion in your love life. Um, this could be beautiful in your love life. Time with sweetheart could be very energizing, you know, dynamic conversations. You could be really getting along. You could be going out, doing things. Great energy there. Great for your work as well, okay? So it's a good time to put yourself forward. So if you want to build your social media presence, if you want to uh, go for new roles, go for promotions, if you wanna get new clients, really go out there, go and get what you want. This is the time, okay? Um, beautiful energy. Now this month is the last month of Rahu Ketu Axis being in Taurus and Scorpio. So that's your eighth house and your second house. So for you, this is going to be the last time across this month. It's going to be the last month that you're going to have a good opportunity to sort something out with regards to shared assets. Okay, that's going to be important. So if there's some big thing that you need to do with shared assets, yes, you've had the last year and a half deal with it, but you're going to have one month to go. Okay, and then March is going to come along and the energy is going to shift. And I will talk you through where it's going to go. But the suppression energy on your second house is also going to lift. So you're going to be able to save money. Okay, if you found it really hard to save money over the last year and a half, that should shift. You should be able to start saving again. Uh, but we'll talk about that more in the next update I do on Rahaketu Axis. Now there's a new moon happening 1st of Feb, Capricorn, Shravana, Nakshatra happening in your fourth house. So you can plant seeds regarding your home. Do you want to live in the same place where you are living or do you want to live somewhere different? Do you want to move to the countryside? Or maybe you've been in the countryside and you want to move to the city. I don't know. But this is a time where you can plant seeds regarding your home, maybe home renovations you want to do, place you want to move to, um, a new home, all of that. Now there's a full moon happening on the 17th of Feb. That is Leo Maga Nakshatra in your 11th house. So perhaps a major project is going to complete at this time, or perhaps you can arrange things. Uh, since you're hearing about it now, hopefully well before the 17th of Feb, you know, maybe you might want to make your deadline the 17th of Feb if you're able to do so. This is also a really good time to reflect on friendship, your networking circles, but also it is a good time to reflect on your friendships actually because you know, there are a lot of changes happening in friendships at the moment. And yeah, there are going to be some people that you, you don't gel with like how you used to. And um, it's just okay to acknowledge that. And look, people come back in the future. You know, you never know, but it's just good to acknowledge where you are with all these things. So Libra, thank you so much for joining. And I'm just going to put my phone away. <laughs> we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now we have got Mars and Venus conjunct in the sky. It's very exciting all month. Um, well, in, in fact, they're going to be conjunct for two and a bit months, aren't they? But they're going to be in your second house all month. And Venus does really well here. So with your love life, this is really a time for you to stay on your side of the tennis net. I've been having to say this for quite a few signs. Work on yourself. Don't get too involved in the other person. Okay, if you're in a relationship, this is a time where there could be arguments. Okay, there's Yudbala in the sky. We've got planetary war going on. Uh, this is pretty big. So I've also got the note here, you've got Venus in the second house. So she might be tempted to do some shopping. Okay, now that's fine. 
but be careful if it's conscious shopping you know where you know that you know I, like if it's conscious shopping as in like um, this is something that you've wanted for quite a while and you've been eyeing it out for ages and now you can buy it yes this is a great month to buy it but if you're using shopping as an escape mechanism that's not good so don't do that um, this is not the month for escapist shopping this is the month for conscious shopping okay um, but ultimately it's a terrific month for inner work and you might want to check out the links of the experts that I'm providing uh, in the description below and you'll find some amazing you know gurus and relationship counselors and things like that there now this is the last month of Rahu and Ketu being in Taurus and Scorpio so for you this has been in seventh and first house okay so this would be the last time that you have well it's interesting because Ketu I think is going to shift into the sixth house uh, for you so you are going to have an opportunity to expand your career still but if it's a self-made business or if it's a social media following or things like that this is really the last month to to experience I would say the height of that type of energy fame social media presence if you're if you've been enjoying doing that over the last year and a half you got about a month left of that so that's yeah expanding your presence your fame in the world your social media following you will be business focused in the next year and a half as well but it'll just be a little bit different you'll be competing a bit more you've also had a suppression energy on your first house so that's on yourself so you might notice after this month that that suppression energy of Ketu is going to lift from your first house so this is going to be you'll feel physically better you're going to have more energy so that's great okay so I think I think this is going to be good but I've got in brackets here you may not be as psychic all right Ketu in the first house does make people quite psychic so perhaps you've had access to that over the past year and a half well you've got a month left <laughs> But next month you know the focus is going to shift and I will be talking you through what that's going to be coming up on the channel so keep your eyes peeled for Rahu Ketu shift video in terms of the moons we've got new moon happening first of Feb Capricorn Shravana Nakshatra and for you that's happening in your third house so you can plant seeds regarding what it is that you would love to see happen in terms of your effort so you know when you put some effort in and you just you just want to win like you put in effort hands on effort and you win you do great what would that be where would you want to see progress this could be in terms of career this could just be in terms of yeah self effort something that you do that makes a great difference I'm just seeing the camera battery is flashing so I think I might I think I am gonna pause this and change the camera battery hi there Scorpio sorry about that the camera battery is flashing and I thought oh, I better change it before it cuts out I think I was talking about where is that place in life where yeah you put in effort and you see results so and it can be career it can be creativity what would you love to just win at if, if someone could say that you could just keep doing something and just keep winning at it I know for a time in my career this was gosh how long ago maybe to 10 or 15 years ago yeah maybe 10 years ago I remember looking at the career of I can't remember her name but she was a Hollywood screenwriter and she just got like the most amazing brief after brief after brief and just she was just like writing screenplay after screenplay after screenplay and they were all amazing and she just she just kept winning the business to do these scripts and she just kept churning out these scripts and I used to think gosh it'd be amazing to do that I used to think god that would be a fun career and I knew someone actually who was a mus musician he was a really top musician and he talked about one of his friends who he described as a hit making machine 
Isn't that amazing? This is this is that. This is that. Like if you could just keep doing something and just keep winning at it, what what would that be? What what would you love to see yourself doing and just keep winning at? So that's new moon, first Feb, third house. It's regarding your self effort, your confidence, and and planting seeds. What would you love to see yourself doing? What do you want to wish for? In that regard, okay, full moon, seventeenth Feb, Leo, Maga Nakshatra, tenth house. What's going on here? So, oh, this is a great time for you to complete a massive work project. So if you're able to, to set your deadline, 17th of Feb, that would be a really good time to complete on some kind of big project. This is also a really great time to take stock of your career, strategically contemplate the changes that you might like to make. And of course, to acknowledge the stepping stone that you're on and to acknowledge that where you are is important and it's taking you somewhere. I firmly believe that no work is ever wasted. Every single thing we do, it counts somehow. You know, it's, it's important. All right, well, Scorpio, thank you so much for joining. And we are now gonna welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now we've got this incredibly big conjunction in the sky, we've got Mars and Venus coming together they're going to walk the night sky together they are going to be conjoined quite tightly at times they are also going to be in planetary war yudbala okay so it's going to be an interesting time there could be arguments now for you this is happening in your first house now venus does really well here in the first house so i would say let your feminine side lead doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman this is a time to be more receptive to listen more, to take time. Don't rush things. Just go at a nice, easy pace with life. Um, definitely, if you're in a relationship and you're a man, perhaps let your lady take the lead for a little bit. That would be a good thing if, if you can, if that's the right thing to do, um, you'll know. Uh, another good thing to do would be to do your self work, okay? Definitely don't expect the other person to change. Make sure you work only on yourself. And you will see this, I promise you, when you do the work on yourself, the other person changes, or if they're totally not suitable for you, you know, in a nice harmonious way, your paths will be, you know, you'll, you'll go different paths. And it'll be nice. It won't be horrible, awful heartbreak. You know, when you're doing your inner work, everything is taken care of, okay? So this is a good time to repair your heart or to let go of old heartbreak energy as well. Now, this is the last month of Rahu Ketu Axis being in Taurus and Scorpio. So for you, that's your sixth house and your 12th house. So this is gonna be the last big career expansion for a while. I mean, you are gonna have, I think you're gonna have Rahu in the fifth house. So that could be actually some career expansion there. But Rahu does really well here in the sixth. So it's going to be the last month of that. It's going to be the last month of you winning against the competition kind of thing. There's also going to be a shift on the suppression energy that you've had on your 12th house. And I've got the note here, you could be losing some protection. What do I mean by this? So. Because Ketu has been in your 12th house, that might have been suppressing expenses and it might have been protecting you spiritually. So when Ketu shifts and goes into, into the 11th house, you might discover your expenses might go up a little bit. I will explore this in the Rahu Ketu video that I'm going to publish. So I'll have a bit of a think about this. but. But I do have the note here that you will be able to travel more. I do see travel opening up for you more. So if you feel like you've been stuck or you've been isolated, this is the last month of that. Okay, so that's some good news there. But I will explore this more in a future video. Now there's a new moon happening on the 1st of Feb. That's Capricorn, Shravana Nakshatra, second house. So this is a really good time to plant seeds regarding your wealth, regarding savings, Regarding your family, maybe you haven't seen your family for ages and you'd love to see them. Maybe you'd love that one day all of you live in the same place. 
um, these kind of things are really good to wish for. Maybe you want to expand your family or to find your tribe. Yeah, these are good things to wish for. There's a full moon happening uh, 17th Feb, Leo Marga Nakshatra for you in the ninth house. This is a great time to complete on a large project or on a stage of a large project. Maybe you could set a deadline for the 17th of Feb if there's something that you would like to have culminate at that time. This is a great time as well to reflect on the concept of authority and how much more authority you have now in life than you've ever had before. Okay, so it's a really good time to acknowledge that you have come some way and it's good to acknowledge where you are the authority in your own life, where it's just down to you, where you're not referring to the government, where you're not referring to family, where you're not referring to society, or you're not caring so much about other people's opinion that you neglect and don't act on your own, what's within you. You know, there's that, that leadership fire within you that you need to be acting on. So it's looking like a really good month, Sagittarius, all up. I'm wishing you well. Take care. We are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, when it comes to this Mars and Venus conjunction, this is huge. And it's going to be across this month. It's going to be across the month afterwards. Venus and Mars in the 12th house for you. So Venus does really well in the 12th house. The other thing that we've got here is we do have Mars. We, uh, mm, yeah, this is interesting. There could be quite a lot of passion in your relationship. So if you're in a relationship and things are going great, you're in that honeymoon phase, fantastic. This is beautiful energy for love, for passion, for being really together, you know, um, great time for a short getaway. You know, if, if you're able to, well, my goodness, really enjoy this. This could be quite incredible. However, not everyone is in that situation. And I think for a lot of people, this is going to manifest in terms of arguments and ugh, clashes and, you know, people not getting on. So what I would say is that work on yourself, work on your side of the tennis net, work with your heart. Know that if you change something, shift something significant in your heart, Okay, this is not a mental thing. This is a heart thing. You've got to really shift the energy in your heart, in your body, in your consciousness. If you can do that work there, you will see that the other person will shift and transform and lift as well automatically. They will just rise up to where you are. Or if you're meant to part ways, you will part ways, but it will be nice. It won't be horrible or heartbreak or bad or any of that. So... Another thing you can do is I've got a series of links below to gurus, experts on relationships. And I think that these uh, different talks and topics that I've selected, some of the talks will be good, but what you might want to do is just click on the author of the talk and just select content that really speaks to you. Okay, so see what's out there and learn from some good gurus. And um, because this is in your 12th house, it's a really a good time for you to learn from some gurus some experts on relationships and love and all that kind of thing. Now this month is the last month of Rahu Ketu Axis being in Taurus and Scorpio. So that's 5th and 11th houses. So for you, this is going to be the last month of Rahu really being focused on creativity, romance, children. Okay, uh, that's going to shift and we're going to talk about that shift. I'm going to make a video about that. Now the suppression energy on your 11th house is going to lift so that may mean that some more opportunities are going to come your way. That's what I'm really hoping this is for you because one of the things that you might have noticed over the last year and a half is that it's been hard to attract opportunities or opportunities to build wealth or to really expand your life have been few and far between. If that's the case, you've got one month left of that. Okay. You will, though, have Ketu in the 10th house. So again, that's, not, that's a suppression energy on your career again. Okay, I've, I've ridden through this. I know what this is. And I, yeah, I found it, it dried up my career. Um, <laughs> I suffered through this one. So I know what this is. But um, 
I'm really wishing and praying that when, she, when Ketu shifts into the 10th, you should be able to network more, okay? Your social media should grow, networking, opportunities, that, that should lift and open up. So I, I'm confident about that one. And if I'm remembering back to when I went through this, I think that is what happened to me. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. All right, so we'll talk about that more though in another video, future video. Let's take a look at the moon situation. So we've got a new moon on the 1st of Feb, Capricorn, Shravana, Nakshatra, your first house. So this is a time to plant seeds for anything you want. I tell you what, wish for, wish for something that is just going to make your life, you know, this is you, this is, this is your new moon. So this is really a time to wish this is what I would be wishing for if I was you. I'd be wishing, how can I be more my true self? How can I fully and honestly be more present, be more me? It's that Bruce Lee, I'm going to do a master's video on him. I am. I've talked about this on the channel before. He's on my list. I've got a very long list. And he talks about how he wished to express himself totally honestly. And that look at his expression, it was with his body, it was with martial arts, you know, but that was his way. And for me, it would be Vedic astrology. How can I express myself through Vedic astrology completely? You know, it's, it's this kind of thing. It's this level of thing that you can wish for on this new moon. You can wish for yourself to kind of fully, um, fully be here and be unrestricted and be free, you know, and to be real and authentic with everyone you know, and to be respected and to be honored. You can wish for big things on this new moon. Go crazy. That's what I say. Wish, wish for all kinds of things. That's new moon, 1st of Feb, Capricorn, Travana, Nakshatra. Now there's a full moon on the 17th of Feb, Leo, Maga, Nakshatra, 8th house. So this could be a time actually where secrets are illuminated. You're going to have a huge amount of moonlight happening there in your eighth house. So is there something you want to know? And is there something you want to know perhaps to do with family or to do with your partner or to do with something that you just always wanted to know? What is that? Well, some secrets might be revealed on the 17th of Feb. So be looking out for that Capricorn. All right, we are now going to welcome Aquarius. I'm just checking the time. We're all good. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So what have we got going on Aquarius? Well, we've got a big Mars and Venus conjunction happening in your 11th house. This is so good. I'm so happy for you Aquarius because you need good news. I know you've had it tough for a while and uh, I'm telling you this is good, good news. So if you're in a relationship, this could be a really passionate time. Okay, if you're in that honeymoon phase, if things are going great, that's wonderful. You could really enjoy this time. However, there could, you know, there could be arguments. I mean, let's face it, they, they, these two, Venus and Mars, they are going to be at war. There's a bit of Yudbala going on here. So even if things are great, things could be tricky. But what I'm going to say to you is that Venus and Mars are excellent in the 11th. Both of them are excellent there. So when it comes to work projects, when it comes to increasing your income, networking, bringing in the money, bringing in clients, you could succeed a lot. So I would actually say, don't worry too much about love life. For you actually, uh, bring in the bring in the bacon, bring in the, or the vegan alternative, I don't know. <laughs> bring in the good stuff and work. I think this is good for work actually, more than anything. Um, but it's good for love too. The 11th house is great. All right, so now this is the last month of Rahu, Ketu, Axis in Taurus and Scorpio. So this is your fourth and tenth houses. For you, this will be the last month where your home life is really going to be in focus. Perhaps you've been uh, at home a lot. Perhaps you've been stuck at home. Perhaps you haven't really hardly gone out anywhere. Well, this is going to be your last month of being so stuck and so stuck at home or so isolated. Okay. Um, Next month, things are going to shift and I think you're going to travel more. I think things are going to be, you're going to have energy as well. You're not going to be so home focused. So this is going to be great. Um, the suppression energy that's been on your 10th house is also going to lift. 
So this will enable your career to grow. If you've been feeling like, oh, my career has been like, I've been working, working, working so hard and I haven't been going anywhere. Well, I'm telling you, this is the last month of that. Things are going to shift, okay? I think your career is going to get a lot more like uh, br br breathing, breath, prana, I don't know, chi. It's like, it's going to grow, it's going to breathe, it's going to expand, okay? So you're going to have some more life there. And that's going to happen sort of um, the 1.5 years, 1.5 years after March. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to make a video about it. So there's a new moon happening on the 1st of Feb. That's Capricorn, Shravana, Nakshatra. That's happening in your 12th house. So this is a beautiful time to plant seeds for spiritual growth. Okay, and this is a great time to carry a notepad with you, jot down your dreams, ideas will come. You're going to get all kinds of incredible ideas. You're going to get heaps of downloads, ideas. Things are just going to come through. Uh, so that's the first of Feb. That's really important. And some of these ideas might, yes, they'll help you grow spiritually, but they might help you with your career. I think you're going to get some really good career-related ideas as well. Now, full moon, 17th Feb, Leo Maga Nakshatra. This is happening in your seventh house. So a work project may finish or culminate, or perhaps you might be able to set the date that your work project will finish on the 17th of Feb. The other thing that this could represent, this full moon, is that... I'm so sorry, Aquarius, I have to take a sip of water. I've been non-stop talking for about half an hour. Um, full moon, what have we got going on? There could also be a dynamic or pattern that you've been carrying in relationships that you've outgrown or that may come to an end. So, so what is this pattern? Or maybe you've, maybe you've always been attracting a certain type of partner and it's like you're going to recognize I don't need to do that anymore or I don't need to be with that kind of person anymore or some, something could shift in that regard. This could be quite big Aquarius and this could really impact your love life actually because going forward there might be a whole new realm of people that you're attracted to or that you find interesting or that kind of thing. You can explore that and see, see if this, this full moon is going to have that kind of impact. But Aquarius, I want to thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we've got this big Venus and Mars conjunction happening in the sky. Those two are going to be walking together and they're going to be walking through your 10th house. Okay, now this is interesting. This is really good for Mars. This is powerful Mars energy. So you're going to have powerful Mars energy this month. You're going to have quite powerful Mars energy the month after. So you've got quite strong masculine energy throughout this entire stretch. I'm going to say that this is not the best time for love and romance. But you have excellent energy to make progress in your career. Okay. Um, if you are working through things with your love life or you're in a relationship or that kind of thing, this is a great time to work on your own energy, work on your side of the tennis net. And I'm going to leave some links to some relationship experts below and they will be able to talk you through uh, all kinds of things. Just check these people out. You can click on the author um, who has published them, you know, the, the account that has published them and you can have a look and see what other titles these people create. But you'll definitely find some good content there to help you figure out, you'll get all these aha moments about your love life. Now this is the last month of Rahu Ketu Axis being in Taurus and Scorpio. So that's your third house and your ninth house. So for you, this will be the last month where your effort is going to be in focus. Perhaps you've been working really, really hard. Um, that could be how this is manifested for you. So perhaps over the last year and a half, you've been putting a lot of self-effort into things. You've been really working hard. Perhaps you've been working quite hard. I do think that when this shifts, you will be able to travel. You won't be so stuck at home. Okay, maybe you've been quite stuck at home. You've had a through suppression energy in the ninth house there. That might have been suppressing your ability to travel. And that, of course, is 
also related to the pandemic, which is Saturn, Pluto and Capricorn. So yeah, that, that, that is a big long term kind of till, till about 2025 type energy uh, at play there. But, but I do see that you, you won't be so stuck at home. I, I think things are going to lift and shift for you March onwards. You should be able to travel more. But I will be covering that in a future video. Okay, so I will be covering that on the channel. Now there's a new moon happening 1st of Feb, Capricorn, Shravana, Nakshatra in your 11th house. So this is a time where you can plant seeds for expansion in your social circle, in your friends. Maybe you want to meet your tribe. Maybe you want to meet people that you really click with. Maybe you want to start working with people who are more on your wavelength and who feel the similar way to you. Okay, this is a really great time to plant seeds for that kind of expansion. And there's a full moon happening on the 17th of Feb, Leo Maga Nakshatra in your sixth house. So something at work might complete. This might also be a time where you nominate for your project to complete on the 17th of Feb. If you can, that would be good. This is also a really great time to reflect on your career and to see how far you've come. Okay. Uh, and to look at, you know, where you are in terms of the competition. Sometimes it is good just to check out the competition, just to see what other people are doing, just to get ideas, to see how you stack up, you know, um, and that, that's a good thing to do. To to, because that helps your self-reflection, that helps you create your career going forward. So that might be an activity you might want to do at that full moon to kind of look at the competition, see where you are in line with the competition. Also to reflect on service and excellence in service and what, where you serve others through what it is that you do. Because I do believe that in every job there's a service element. There's always something, you know, you can always do it with a smile. You can always, you know, I don't know. I think, yeah, always do it with a smile. There we go. Some, something like this. There's always some service element to what we do. And maybe if your work is purely digital, maybe how you type, how you write, you know, there's always a way of wishing someone well or just adding some tiny little thing into your service but that just lifts the game to a whole new level. So you could be reflecting on those kind of things at this time. But Pisces, thank you so much for joining. And of course, I'm just checking the time. We're all good. Of course, to anyone who's watched this the whole way through, thank you so much for watching the entire video. I'm always delighted that there are people who like to see, and, and of course, because you're observing all 12, you're observing the energy as it moves throughout the whole zodiac. Yes, this is, this is a really good thing to do. And what I am going to do to finish off this episode this time, I am going to put a little bit of a grab of that beautiful music. It was um, Hands Off Our Children by Joyda May. Do check out Joyda May's uh, I'm going to put the links to Joy to May and even I donated some money to to their cause um, earlier today and yeah and I just thought I'll play a bit of the music because it's so beautiful so uh, I'm going to leave you with that beautiful music thank you so much for tuning in everyone and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.